It's DJ Double here, and today I'm sat down with Mr. International himself, yeah. Jay Silver in the Saffin building. Saffin in, What's going on, bro? I'm good, how are you? I'm all right, thanks, man. Thanks for coming on the show. Dude, you dropped some heavy stuff in 2017, man. Some wicked records resonating out from you. Correct. Biggest question is, where have you been? Because <sighs> 2017 was like almost a year ago now. <laughs> true. Um, and you've been a little bit quiet. <sighs> yep. True. Straight, straight in at the deep end, bro. <laughs> Man, I get, I get asked this question like almost every day. But I mean, what can I expect? Um, I had a, how can I say? I had a kind of like a, a bad time. Right. Filming, okay. So um, I just had to find a way to balance everything. Right. Got so, you. So um, yeah. Just about now that I've. I can produce good music. So. Right. So the personal stuff aside now and you're yeah. back in the studio, that's dope, man. So obviously, I mean, it must be kind of bittersweet, obviously going through personal stuff, but being asked this at the start of every interview, it shows that people have missed you, bruv. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of, must be a good feeling, yeah, sort is. of in a way, I guess. Yeah, it is a good feeling to some extent, but um, yeah, just what I have to deal with, but... Yeah, well, the fans are happy, man, because I've been looking at a lot of the comments on the, the most recent music, and everyone's just commenting, Jay Silver's back. Correct. So they're Correct. there, they've been waiting for you, man. Definitely, um, definitely. Did you know you've got the same name as an MMA fighter? Yeah. Right, do you know how long it is coming to like do some research and stuff and, and then like, find things out, more things that I don't know about you, and I'm yeah, Jay Silver this, Jay Silver, I'm just seeing fight stuff. Boxing bro. gloves. <laughs> Shorts. <laughs> is Jay Silver your real name? Um... Yeah. It is. It is my own name, yeah. So you're a producer and an artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What came first? Producing. Okay. Okay. You sound different to like a lot of other artists. There's not there's not many people I would say that we can kind of put you in the brackets of. Okay. Do you, do you know what? You remind me of in a way, you remind me of Akon. Uh, to a certain extent. I've been listening to I appreciate to, that. Especially more recently as well. Like <laughs> I don't blame you. I would definitely, definitely say that. Who else would you say, well, firstly, is Akon an influence on your music? 100%. 100%. So I'm on the money there. Um, 100%. I'm not even going to front. Yes. He's inspired me a lot. Bullseye. Since, since like, age of, like, 12, like, right. I've been listening to his music and I'm just like, how does he do it? Like, yeah. No one sounds like him, that, that high noise, like, I don't know how he does it. Like, I don't know, but it's just different. Yeah, it's, it's mad good. because it's like, it's different to R&B because it's, it's singing on rap beats and singing on trap beats and stuff, which is obviously something Akon's been doing, like Locked Up as a perfect example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be a hip hop record, yeah. but, but it's not. So it's dope, man. Who else would you say has influenced you as an artist? Um, Sean Paul has influenced me as well. Okay. Quite a bit. And yeah, just a mix of them two. Mm -hmm. Which Sean Paul? And by that, I mean, uh, we've got one drop reggae Sean Paul. We've got real dancehall Sean Paul, yeah. and then we've got like top forty Sean Paul. So what, or I is it the, a mix? The real dancehall one. The real, the real dancehall. So like, that. yeah, yeah. Infiltrate, yeah. deport them. Yeah, deport them. Yeah. Yes, that that's era. the the best Sean yeah, Paul in definitely. my in my For humble me, opinion. Yeah. That's that dope, man. Prime. You know what? I also when I listen to your music, I kind of hear a lot of R and B influence as well. So like looking at the song "Say My Name" in particular. And I think it's bass man actually does the, the, the closest thing to the sample of the Destiny's Child record, Say My Name. Okay. But where what I hear in your song, in your part of that song, is a little bit of like TLC, No Scrubs, that kind of influence. Would you say that sort of music influenced uh, you in any way? Since you've said that, um, I partially agree. But um, yeah, I partially agree. But when I wrote that song, I wasn't really influenced by anything I was just going with what's on my head mm -hmm. at the time but um, yeah since you said that partially agree as well so. yeah. yeah making your own beats what's the process for you are you making the beat with like a melody in mind already or do you literally just make the beat and then see what happens after Um, when I make a beat um, there's two ways you can make it mm -hmm. there's one where let's say if you're walking to the shop you just hear a car drive by and it's playing a melody. Yeah, yeah. You think that melody in your head, uh -huh. like 
even even comes to the extent where you voice note it yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. on WhatsApp so you don't forget. Yeah, yeah. Because I've had so many instances where I've heard a good melody and I'm just playing in my head and I forget. And yeah, that yeah, yeah. just ruins my whole day. And then you, like, you know it was yeah, a banger as exactly, well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I would like to think so. But um, yeah, there's that way. Or there's another way where you're like, oh, I'm bored. Let me just go on my computer and just type random keys. And then you're like, oh, wait, hold on. This sounds good. Mm-hmm. There's that way as well. But um, yeah, that's it really. What instruments do you play? I don't play instruments at okay. all. So it's just, um, the program has its own like, like synthesizers and stuff, Got different you. sound flutes and stuff, and I just mix and match. So can you play piano to a certain extent, or is it literally so like, it's like, no, like key by key? Yeah, key by key, and I just okay create something. And yeah, I can't like if he told me to play. So I'd, I'd be you like, wouldn't hear that from your music though. That's the mad thing. I, like, I get like not being able to play flute and violin because you can change the the instrument yeah, yeah, with yeah. The, like the VSTs and stuff yeah, on the computer, but. To say that you can't even play the piano like that, I can't. I can't. I can't. I, just like the basic, like, yeah. nursery rhymes. And uh-huh. stuff, That's dope, though, man, because it doesn't show through in the music. Definitely not. Can you rap? Rap in what sense? Like, actually putting, like, spitting on a verse, like an actual rap instead of singing. Nah, man. Never tried it? Nah, nah, nah. Never tried. Or tried it and no one's ever going to hear it because you don't like it? Tried it in my room. Uh, yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> That's about it. It's not leaving the house. <laughs> right, okay. So it's not something you say that you excel nah, at? No, no, no. What would you call yourself as an artist? Like, what what bracket would you put you yourself in? Um, to be honest, I don't know, like, put myself in a bracket. Like, I just feel like... Because I'm different, not sound copy, but um, I wouldn't I wouldn't really put myself in one spot, because I can pretty much do everything. Mm-hmm. Film, apart from rap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said rap. it, not me. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> but uh, generically speaking, yeah. Um, okay, someone that can rap, like I'm sure they can't do other stuff. But um, generally speaking, um, yeah, uh, don't really want to put myself in a bracket. I'll just say I'm just versatile. So. If there's a versatility bracket. Just a versatile artist. You dropped See Me Now, like, almost to the day, three years ago. Just over, literally just over three years ago. Would you say that was the breakthrough record for you? Definitely. Tell me about your first conversation with Big Tobes, because notably the remix did very well as well with Correct. Big Tobes. So talk to me about that. Um, so before See Me Now, mm-hmm. um, obviously I was a producer. Yeah. And... Um, I made an instrumental for Big Tobe, so there was already some sort of um, communication there. And then um, See Me Now came about, and obviously I thought to myself, you know what, I actually like Big Tobe's music, let me just like kind of fire my shot and ask him. But I didn't ask him, and in the end I was like, I might as well just leave the tune by itself. However, mm. he messaged me. Oh, okay. So it was kind of like, a, oh my God. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good news. And, um, yeah, just went from there. For yeah, why not? Let's work and the remix came about. Yeah, it did well, man. It did yeah. the bits. You get um, massive numbers on SoundCloud. Yeah. Like, for someone in your position in the industry as well, like you're rivaling some of the big boy numbers. You know what I mean, when like a lot of the bigger artists, when they say they're celebrating like a million plays and a million views on on YouTube and stuff. Like, you kind of do that easily on SoundCloud, yeah. I would say. You do massive numbers, man. Did you have, like, a strategy for dropping music on SoundCloud or did it just kind of accidentally happen that way? Uh, to be honest, I was never, like, thinking when to drop a song or it was just more of, like, um, I don't know. I always had, like, these long breaks, as everyone knows. So um, it was just a thing where... Um, I didn't expect to make as much numbers as I, as I am. So I, mm-hmm. I guess just like having a strong and loyal fan base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, gets you those numbers, I guess. But um, to be honest, it's a thing where I don't really um, watch the numbers like that. Right. But I'm not going to say I'm not grateful for them. But yeah, it's yeah. just like, you know, I just want to be bigger than that. Uh-huh. Not just focus on these numbers, but I want to be bigger. I want to build my um, report. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Using SoundCloud as a platform, are you going to continue to do that moving forward, or no, are you no, moving on I, to the? I stopped doing that, like. So I noticed something hasn't been uploaded for a while. <laughs> yeah, because I stopped using SoundCloud like I don't know how long ago. Because mm-hmm. I'm on Spotify now. So. Yeah. 
and um proper up. revenue yeah yeah exactly um kind of late to that as well but it's all good um yeah soundcloud is just there as um memories yeah has it concerned you about losing out on a certain fan base by moving to Spotify? Because there might be those people that are just diehard SoundCloud listeners. <laughs> diehard SoundCloud listeners. Yeah, uh, they do exist, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, not really, to be honest. Uh, no? Not, not, not to sound mean or anything, like, to my diehard To the diehard SoundCloud listeners. listeners. But, um, yeah, I just had to just shift... Yeah, I, you know, I just had to meet the current trend as uh -huh. well, because I kind of noticed not much people are listening to SoundCloud as much as the diehard. So right. So yeah, basically, what you're saying is, like it's 2018, Spotify. get your ass on Spotify <laughs> yeah, and yeah, listen yeah. to me there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's <laughs> help each other, basically. What's your favorite Jay Silver track? <sighs> my favorite, nothing on me, is my favorite. Okay, why me. that one in particular? Uh I didn't I didn't think too hard mm. on that tune. And that's the thing about me. When I think too hard, it doesn't really go um my way. But um I didn't think too hard on that tune and um I don't know, man, it was just like a good time in my life as well. You feel me? So yeah. You produced thing. that one for yourself? No, no, no. I I didn't produce Oh that you didn't one. produce that one? Oh okay, so you May I guess it might kind of easier to make that one as well, right? <laughs> uh, not really, because selecting a beat that you haven't produced, that's one hard thing as well. Right. Um, like buying beats and all the rights and all that. So I'll say it's a privilege that I produce yeah, for yeah, myself yeah. because it just kills time. Yeah, there's definitely so many parts of being a producer that people overlook as well. Yeah, exactly. Like you say, like sorting the rights out yeah, and, yeah, exactly. and all of that yeah, stuff. It's, it's, it's crazy. Definitely, man. When you do produce music for yourself, mm. how do you stay out of like the same pattern and making the same song over and over? Um, just, I don't know, I don't know how to answer that. Um, just simply listening to my old stuff and think, you know what, what can I do that's different but still maintaining that versatility mm -hmm. for me? So that could be the instruments used, that could be using the same instruments but a different pattern that doesn't sound the same but you can tell that it's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's pretty much that, really. So, I read you was born in Portugal. Yeah. I moved to the UK. Yeah. So, what's your lineage then? Where are your parents from? They're from Angola. Okay. Yeah, so. Right. Yeah, what Angola. age did you leave Portugal? Nine. So, you speak Portuguese? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fluently? Yeah, fluently, yeah. Have you thought about making, like, a Portuguese record? Because <sighs> Latin music, bro, is up there right now I mean, it has been for a minute but especially now it's, nah, it's true, in a it's major true. way it's true um that could potentially be a plan in the future but right now if i make a portuguese song potentially deteriorate deteriorate for me so i feel like i should just stick to the roots for now okay and if i want to expand the market a bit then i'll probably make a portuguese tune Who knows? dip into the latin market yeah. you could use a different name uh or oh, I could be real to myself. There you go. Could be me. There you go, Ooh. the truth. So what can you tell me about the Tutti Fruity mixtape? Okay, so um, <clears throat> it's an EP. Mm -hmm. um, it's coming out early next year. Um, Tutti Fruity. Yeah, people probably think, why am I going to name it Tutti Fruity? But um, when I was young, it was like a drink flavor. Okay. That I was addicted to, like. If I didn't have that, I don't want to have nothing else. <laughs> and yeah. I thought, what does they mean? Mm -hmm. And that means like all flavors. Right, all I mean. different types, like the ice cream, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, I thought, you know what, that kind of correlates to me because I'm not, I can't just stick to one genre. I can do quite a few. Mm -hmm. So if you know what, let me make an EP and show the public that I can do everything except rapping. <laughs> except rapping so, and there's not going to be any Portuguese music on there. Yeah, exactly, that too. <laughs> But um, yeah, just sounded right to me. Okay. So how many tracks? Nine. Nine tracks. And they're all finished? Yeah. Okay. 100% finished. Yeah. So, all right. So so the project is basically you're ready to go. Yeah. Everything's good to go. Well, when done, is it, done, and you yeah. said it's dropping early, early next year. Early next year. So January. Early 2019. But I'm not going to say a specific date, but somewhere around January. Could be February. Okay. Could be March. Okay. So in terms of production... Did you take care of all of that yourself? Yeah, yeah. I produced every single tune except for one. Okay. But um, 
Who's yeah. the other producer? Uh, Stimpy. He goes by the name of Stimpy. Okay, so I was going to ask about this, right? Because you've got a record together called Swerving. Correct. Is that the song that's on the project? Uh, yep. Okay, sick. What other records are on there? Paycheck? Paycheck's on it. Mercedes Benz? Mercedes Benz on it. And okay. And a couple others. Right. But got we'll you. just have to wait and see. Film. Okay. When you came back, Mercedes was Mercedes Benz the, like the the re-entry record. Mm -hmm. You sounded a little bit different on there Correct. to what we're used to. So can you explain like the the change oh. in sound? Like it wasn't a massive change, but it was a slight shift. Correct. Can you talk to me about that? Um, so when I made Mercedes Benz, I made the instrumental and um, probably like twenty minutes because mm -hmm. I already had like. The foundation of it just yeah. lying there so if you know let me revisit this file and stuff cool so i made the instrumental then as i was feeling the vibe i just thought you know what let me just put mercedes benz on this instrumental let me name it mercedes benz mm -hmm. so when i named it that as i was writing i was thinking oh, I'm not, i don't know what to call it i don't know what to call it but i forgot that i, I named the file mercedes benz so i just started writing if you know what mercedes benz sounds good on it and yeah it is a totally different vibe to what I normally sound mm -hmm. because um, I must say I'm heavily influenced by US artists right okay not so much U UK artists not to be disrespectful obviously but um, it's just music man it's yeah, exactly it's music, yeah. that way. whatever you I listen to don't listen to someone who's not some that hard UK like, I don't know that's it they're you on know. SoundCloud yeah yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no I, I hear you so yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, that's pretty much what um, happened but, um, yeah some people like it Mm -hmm. Some people don't, but that's life. Why is it a case that you listen to a lot more US stuff than UK? Well, because coming from Portugal, um, I never really listened to UK things yeah. there anyway. So um, back then it wasn't really nah, saying a lot anyway. Nah, so. nah. Like there, I've always listened to US artists there, so Akon, uh -huh. Sean Paul. So I've always had that kind of like in me. Yeah. yeah. And I just carry that here. <laughs> right, got you. So, um, you got a couple of dope collaborations under your belt, but what I like about you is you haven't oversaturated your stuff with just bringing everyone in and doing stuff with everybody all the time. Firstly, is that a decision that you made to kind of keep yourself just on the tracks so you can shine? Um, that's partially a decision that I've made because um, I kind of want to have that unique status. Mm -hmm feel me and um not necessarily saying i don't know work of other people but just a sense of i want people to know when they click on my name okay this is definitely going to sound different to what i listen to every day not to sound cocky at the same time yeah and um that's pretty much it yeah. i like the record you did with brands though okay stuff like that like more collaborations like that would be would be very dope to hear man who would be your ultimate collaboration i think you might have answered it already but Shampoo. dead or alive anyone oh. ever Dead or alive? Dead or alive, anyone ever, who would you most like to record a record with? For myself, uh -huh. like for me, not for what people want to hear, for yeah, me. For you. Man, Sean Paul, man. I it's Sean Paul, yeah. I knew, I, I tried, but I can't, I just, like, I can't, like, if it wasn't for him, I don't know, like, I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd be an artist, man, if it wasn't for him, like. Yeah. And I know some people are like, oh, like, but you know when something means like something to you you know what I mean like when I was young and I listened to that guy's voice obviously I did not speak English at the time and I was young like, mm -hmm. you know, when I listened to, I was like what is this like I don't know what he's saying but it sounds cold you feel me then yeah so you know. heard him you first heard him at a time when you didn't understand the language I didn't understand nothing he's saying like to yeah. me it's just like blah, blah, blah. but it sounded good you know what I mean yeah, to me yeah. it sounded like gibberish like do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to me, it sounded good. Like that's what's important to me. So, um, yeah, I'm not gonna say I copy like him word by word, but I do. He does like influence me a lot. So, mm -hmm. Him and Akon, because they're different. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, just the art of difference. You feel me? So, um, so what do you want to happen to you in 2019? What's the uh, plan? What's the goal? In 2019. I want to be bigger than ever, man. And I know it's a bit, like, but it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. It just, I just have to revisit everything and just, because it's all, like, strategy. Yeah, 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 100%. And um, 
yeah, I just want to be bigger than ever and just continue making music and no breaks and no, no time off. Just show everyone that, you know, I can do it. Show me. So yeah. What? So what's the label situation now? Are you signed? <laughs> Not signed, but my project is signed. Firstly, I was gonna release it independently, but I will. I decided to. Um, sign my project with them because I want to take it to a level where I want it to be mm -hmm. not just lying there because it's a lot of hard work so like lots of countless sleepless nights yeah 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 and stuff you feel me so um, I believe if I take my project to the next level I'll have a good year and yeah that's definitely what I really want so yeah dope well it's decent to have like a team behind you doing all the admin stuff all the boring no, stuff no, basically definitely. it gets it out there and you can focus <laughs> on the creative side yeah shout out to them innit? and well. get, getting yourself out touring and club shows and all that stuff potentially yeah sick man jay silver it's been a pleasure bro so no we're looking forward to the tutti Free ep definitely, it's not a mixtape it's an definitely. ep ep yeah correct dope january 2019, 2019. exciting definitely. times dj double here with jay silver come on